Hi, everyone. I'm meteorologist Royal Norman, and this is Sonoran Sky, a first alert podcast from Arizona's family. All things weather, all things related to weather, sometimes stuff that's not even related to stuff related to weather. But today, related to weather, we're going to be talking about wildflowers, and we're going to talk to Ange uh, Angelica uh, Elliott from over at the Desert Botanical Garden. Angelica, how are you doing today? Good. How are you? Thanks for having me. I'm doing great. Yeah, thanks for being on the show because... I got a whole bunch of questions about wildflower flowers, and <laughs> if I can say it, and I also have a whole bunch of of uh, hopeful ideas about the wildflower season to come. But before we get to that, let me just ask you: uh, What's a wildflower in Arizona, and what isn't? Like, for instance, if I said to you, African daisy, not or yes, wildflower. Well, it can get a little confusing sometimes, but the way that I see a wildflower is anything that grows naturally in the wild without human help. Um, you know, because we cultivate plants, you know, we water them, we fertilize, we prune them. But I kind of my definition of a wildflower is anything that grows without human help. And so you could technically say a African daisy is a wildflower because it does grow naturally in our desert conditions. However, it is not native to our regions. And sometimes you have to be really careful with some of those non-native annual wildflowers, or even though they can be showy, they can be invasive and actually compete with our native wildflowers, which we don't want that competition because, you know, there's some wildflowers that can be extremely invasive, like the African daisy, like the, the stink net that is another oh. African wildflower, although it's beautiful and people think, oh, it's it's growing everywhere. It's it's showy. It's colorful. But these types of wildflowers, you know, technic, you know, can be invasive. So so, yes, it's anything that grows in the wild, but if you go drill down a little bit more, the native wildflowers like the poppies, the lupins, the owls clover, those are our native wildflowers, and they're typically annuals, so they have a short season. Sometimes they call them ephemerals, where they only live maybe six months or less. So here's my question right out of the gate is we had a lot of rain in October and November, is that too early to kick in a decent wildflower season? To, or Because, you know, a lot of times we've got to have that winter rain to get a great wildflower season. Is it too early? Did we get that rain too early? No, actually, no. Um, I think so. Generally, you know, research has shown that in order to get like these banner years of wildflowers where you see mass carpets in the desert, usually they do have to start early. The earlier, the better if it, it starts in October and then we get at least an inch of rainfall each month all the way at least until February, March. And you know that probably doesn't happen every year <laughs> yeah. where we get an inch a month from October all the way through March. So they, you know, research has shown that because it doesn't happen every year, it, it may happen every 10 years where you see these mass displays of wildflowers. But the earlier, the better. And it has to do with, of course, rainfall, at least an inch per month. And then soil temperatures are really important. So when the soil, when the weather starts to cool and the soil temperatures start to cool, that's what it also enhances the germination of wildflowers. So Angelica, does that mean we could start seeing wild flowers a little earlier than we're used to this year? So so if they germinate and we still continue to get rain and right now they should be you know with, with this rain that we just received right. they some of them probably have already germinated and then if we do still continue to get rain there'll probably be some more germination and during this cool season this is when they start to grow um, from you know October all the way till probably maybe end of March. But as soon as it starts to get warm, that's when they start to produce the flowers. And that's, it's, it's nature is telling it, it's time to start flowering, producing that seed, which is the offspring of that plant because they cannot live through the summer. So that's why the warmer that it gets, the faster that they start to produce flowers and start to bloom. Okay. So you could actually see flowering as early as in February if it starts to warm really quick. If it starts to warm up quick. That's mm -hmm. yeah, that's and that would be early, that's for sure. Now, are wildflowers any way related to the flowering of some of our cacti including saguaros or are cacti more on a schedule cuz they're bigger plants and that kind of thing? 
Yeah, so it's a little bit different. I mean, all plants need water um, um, to survive and to produce flowers because flowering for plants is very energy um, intensive. So it, they need water, they need nutrients, they need, you know, sugars, you know, through photosynthesis <laughs> in order to flower because flowering does take a lot for energy for that plant. So with, with, um, cactus you know and perennials like the trees like our palo verdes some of our shrubs like a chuparosa they're more reliable in as far as flowering so even though we may not get those wildflowers those annual flowers to bloom every year because they're so dependent on the timing of the rainfall the those cactus and trees they're not as reliant as a rainfall um you know they still need water but they could they'll still continue to bloom so that's why every year we, we will see palo verde start to bloom the cactus start to bloom and the cactus are really interesting because they actually store water in their stems so they can use that stored water to produce those energy intensive flowers <laughs> All right, so I'm that's gonna, why you see the the cactus blooming, you know, every year. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so I'm going to tell you my personal wildflower story. About ten, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago, we had one or two little teeny weeny poppies pop up in our front yard, which is all rocks, and we kind of are close to a desert area, and we're like, how could that? Be? Well, they probably blew there or something like that, and so we let them go, and you know, we had two little blooms, and when we were thrilled. And the next year we had a little bit more and a little bit more. And then one year it didn't rain and we didn't have anything and we were super depressed. And then one year we had a ton of rain and we had like, it seemed like bushes of green poppies waiting to turn yellow in our front yard. And, you know, uh, the HOA was coming by, you know, those are weeds. You need to cut them out. No, 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 they're wildflowers. Please don't cut them. So right. I guess what I'm saying is, is that. It, the, those the wildflowers are really dependent on what the rain and what kind of uh, warmth you get. They really are. They surely are, and that's the that's kind of the beauty of these plants um, because they're so they are relying on the rainfall. But just think, you know, you had mentioned, you know, with your experience with the poppy, that you know there were years that was there were a couple years or you know a year that you didn't see any coming yeah. up. But that seed can lie, stay there dormant in the ground, you know, just dormant, just waiting for the perfect rain, the perfect temperatures in order for it to germinate. And that's the beauty. And sometimes they can just lie there dormant for like 10 years or even more, just waiting for the right temperature and the, and the right amount of rainfall. So they're very... Um, endurers of the desert so they can they can live for a long time you know before you know you know before the rain comes yeah that that is so amazing i mean it's just it, and it's you know when we have good years um people flock to these sites first of all you probably get to ask this a lot but are there specific locations that see, like for instance i think we've all um uh, heard of like our secret location or whatever, but are there specific locations you can go when there's a good flowering year and see a bunch of them? Yeah, there's actually, we're, you know, the Phoenix Valley, we're really lucky because we're surrounded by beautiful um, mountain ranges. So, you know, South Mountain, you know, that's just a hop, skip and a jump from, you know, yeah. the Phoenix, you know, Superstition Mountains is always one of my favorites because the mountain is just striking, you know, the Superstition Mountains, you know, even out at the White Tank. So, you know, just anywhere out in those desert regions, you know, because we're surrounded by desert, there's not really a, a bad place to go <laughs> to see them because it's everywhere is really stunning and striking. You know, the desert is such a beautiful place. So, you know, when we do get those banner years, um, you know, I, you know, I encourage people to go out there to see really the beauty of the desert because it is a striking. And then, of course, if they can't, you know, get to those places, you know, they can always come here to the Desert Botanical Garden because we have a lot of those different plants, especially different plants from over all over the world. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. But first, I also heard that Picacho Peak can be a really good place if you want to even bring up, do a little hiking, too, at the same time. That's yeah, so Picacho Peach is peaks. Picacho Peak is definitely a place to view uh, wildflowers. You know, because that whole peak is covered mm -hmm. uh, most likely with uh, the uh, poppies, which are really a famous wildflower because they just carpet the blanket, uh, carpet the desert with orange. Yeah, yeah. So um, when people are out uh, and out in the wild looking at poppies and whatnot, and it seems like they go on forever, um, 
You know, there was a something over in California a couple of years ago. There was a big bloom, and then all of a sudden, everything was getting trampled. We don't want to see that, do we? No, no, because you know it's it's really important, you know, you know, to stay on the trails, um, you know, when you're out there hiking and not trampling these plants, because you know they're they're these wildflowers, you know, even though they, they're flowering, they haven't produced the seed yet, you know, so it flowers, they get pollinated by bees or butterflies, um, the different pollinators, and then they'll produce seed. But when you're trampling on um, flowering plants, you're preventing them from producing their offspring, that future generation. And if that keep continually happen, you know, you can damage that uh, ecosystem. So we really encourage to stay on the path and really to help protect our wildflowers. The other thing is that I know people love to, uh, they love these wildflowers and they want to grow them there in their yard, yeah. but also refrain from collecting seed because a lot of times you do need to have permits mm -hmm. to collect seed, especially from, um, uh, you know, uh, private, either whether it's private land or public land, you definitely need permits. And if you get caught, you can, you can get in trouble. So refrain from also seed collection um, unless you ha have permission or get permits to do so. Yeah, and I'll give a little hint on that too. You know what, if you go buy a packet of Cal California poppy seeds at your local, uh, you know, nursery, no one will be able to know the difference anyway. And you can plant them all over your house and have fun. Right. Yeah, and you can and you can find there's there's uh, nurseries and growers that collect you know um, or not collect but they they grow wildflowers to be packaged and um, sold to retail. So you can mm -hmm. actually purchase a lot of these um, seeds, whether it's online or at, at your, you know, nurseries. So, you know, try buying from the nursery or, um, you know, the retail stores before you collect on private <laughs> or public plants. <laughs> you, you know what I really love about our wildflowers? And you'll, you'll think this is kind of weird. I don't know. It's that and I haven't seen, I, I've maybe seen six or seven. I've seen mostly poppies that, you know, people have pointed out to me. They're, we're in one of the harshest climates in the world, and we produce these delicate, beautiful flowers. How on earth does that happen? And that's just nature's nature's glory. I mean, yeah, it's just, it is it is amazing that here in the desert, you know, we have some of the harshest temperatures, you know, very low precipitation. And we do have these amazing plants. But I think what makes our desert, the Sonoran Desert, um, unique and interesting, you know, compared to other deserts is that we have this bimodal rainfall mm -hmm. uh, periods where we usually get our summer rains and then, of course, our winter rains. So that's why we do have the diversity that we do in comparison, say, to the Mojave or the Chihuahuan Desert, where they only get, you know, a, a one season of rain. So that's why a Sonoran Desert is very diverse. And we have over over 3,000 species of, of plants. And I believe unless unless research has changed we have second in the world in the diversity of bees um as well so you know our sonoran desert is a very diverse place even despite the harshness sometimes yeah it, it's an amazing place to get out and explore especially this time of year when it's cool and I would welcome people to do that. Let's talk a little bit about the botanical garden where you are. Um, you, you mentioned that you have a lot of the wild species there if people just want to come and to the botanical garden. Tell me about that. Yeah, so the garden is, uh, you know, we've been here for over 80 years, um, the botanical garden, and we showcase uh, specifically plants from the desert. Mm -hmm. And we have two large collections, um, national collections, um, in in the country and that focuses on cactus and agave so you know in the springtime is when a lot of our cactus are blooming so we have uh, thousands of uh, different uh, species of cactus that are growing here. So spring is usually a great time to see a lot of these flowering uh, cactus. And they it's a kaleidoscope of colors from <laughs> yellows to planks. I mean, it's just, it's the flowering is amazing. Yeah. And then, um, you know, we do have a wildflower trail as well. So that also encompasses uh, desert 
flowers from the world, specifically here in the Southwest deserts. Um, so that we usually um, try to coax the wildflowers along <laughs> by, by giving them supple, supplemental irrigation when when we are not getting the natural rainfall. So there there is a, a trail that is devoted to wildflowers that they can enjoy when maybe the desert is not as uh, abundant with wildflowers. Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. I didn't ask you ahead of time. I was going to ask you this question, but I'll answer it too. Do you? <laughs> no, I will because because I already know my answer. Do you have a favorite? plant it doesn't have to be a, a a flower but plant cacti whatever that has a flower that you just think is fantastic what's your favorite flower in the desert if you oh, have if you have one <laughs> you know that's a tough one but i you know what the one it's actually the tree it's the ironwood tree ah. uh their flowers even though they're there's maybe small but when they're in abundance it just it just like covers the canopy of the tree and it's just strike beautiful but i guess i love the ironwood tree because it's truly a sentinel of the mm -hmm. desert you know mm -hmm. it's very long lived you know some they say some can live up to over 800 years old longer than a saguaro believe it or not wow. and you know they're just such a beautiful stately tree that i i every time i see an ironwood i just <laughs> marvel of its beauty yeah and again when they're in bloom those blooms are so delicate and pretty yes. it's just amazing yeah it is okay mine what is yours uh, it's, it's a saguaro bloom i just okay. can't, i cannot <laughs> get over saguaro blooms they just you know for some people they go huh and i go no i love that bloom and it's, it is a beautiful flower it yeah. definitely is a, is a stately flower as well yeah i mean it has a trumpet look and as you say i think i like saguaros the same reason you like ironwoods is they're sentinels of the desert they live a long time they've been there forever and that makes me happy too <laughs> me too i think that makes me happy too and they're when they're you know that they're just they're there and they'll be there for a long time all right i'm going to put you on the spot angelica uh, angelica elliott from the um uh, desert botanical garden has been with us talking all things flowers it's been great now okay so when uh, on a level of one to ten let's say what kind of flower seed and i know you can't predict this but take a stab at it anyway what kind of uh, wildflower season are we going to have in 2026 so we did get that early rain right um so and it was a good rain you know we got quite a quite a bit of rain so i currently i'm gonna be i'm more of an optimist <laughs> i'm, I'm a, a, an optimist so i'm saying it might be a five or six Ooh. I'm, I'm hoping i'm hoping that we'll be getting some rain pretty soon hopefully at least early next year yeah. so fingers crossed if we get rain i'm gonna say it's a five or a six. Oh, that's fantastic that would be really really nice angelica elliott i appreciate uh, meeting you and talking with you and talking all things flowers and have a great holiday season and let's go looking for wildflowers next year eh yes yes absolutely thank you so much it was a pleasure take care all right bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.